Hi guys, in today's video I wanted to show you guys how I make my eco-friendly recyclable stickers for all of my packaging. If you've seen my studio vlogs, you know I'm really passionate about using zero waste and recyclable materials. And although I switched my packaging to boxes like these, craft boxes, recyclable shipping envelopes, glassine envelopes, I still had leftover stickers from a company called Online Labels and I quickly realized that the majority of stickers aren't actually recyclable so the stickers that I would put on things like the boxes or the glass scenes would have to be peeled off if anyone wanted to curbside recycle all of their stuff. Most stickers aren't recyclable because the adhesive on them is so sticky that it isn't recycle friendly and the backings on sticker sheets are usually coated with silicone so that makes them not recyclable either. The circle label sheets that I got from online labels came in a really big pack so it took me a really long time to get through all of them but I'm finally on my last sticker sheet so I'm really excited to completely transition to eco-friendly recyclable stickers so that you don't even have to worry about peeling any of the stickers off of things like the boxes, the glassine, or the shipping envelopes. Now a lot of you guys might be getting your sticker sheets from Amazon from online labels or from onlinelabels.com or sticker sheets that are made for Silhouette or Cricut machines. So you may be wondering how it is that I'm able to make stickers that are eco-friendly and recyclable. And it's actually because of a company called Eco Enclose. As you may know from Studio Vlog 7 where I share all of my packing and shipping supplies, I order all of my shipping supplies from Eco Enclose. Back when I made the transition to 100% recycled and 100% recyclable shipping materials, Eco Enclose actually didn't have any stickers that were also zero waste and 100% recyclable. Now they have zero waste stickers and labels and 100% recycled stickers. So the stickers that I like using are the ones that are the zero waste stickers just because the lining on the back of the sticker sheet can be recycled and the sticker itself can be recycled. And if you click on that link there, it talks about how you can go zero waste with your stickers and labels and how you can stop trashing your liners. And I find this little tidbit here really interesting. It says globally we use and subsequently throw away more than 60 billion release liners every single year. Release liners are a $20 billion market that's part of our daily lives in the form of stickers, labels, band-aids, feminine products, and medical supplies. But here's the problem. Traditional release liners are silicone coated and extremely difficult to recycle, so they inevitably end up in the landfill by the billions. And because stickers and labels are an accessory to e-commerce packaging, they're easy to overlook when you're greening your packaging until now. So when I saw that they made this change, I immediately ordered the shipping labels because I wanted people to be able to recycle their envelopes without having to worry about peeling off the shipping label. Since I didn't have a label printer at the time, I just ordered the eight and a half by 11 sheets that have a cut down the middle so that you can print two labels per sheet and I could use it with my normal HP printer. These are a bit on the expensive side if you're using them for shipping labels and I quickly realized that if I bought a Dymo label printer, which is the printer that I used for my shipping labels, and then bought their shipping label rolls instead, the same ones that also have a zero waste liner, that I would be saving so much more money. So I went ahead and made that investment. Then one day while I was packaging my bracelets and all my jewelry in these glassine envelopes, I was using washi tape that I would cut to close the envelope and I realized, hey, maybe I can use the leftover paper that I have from Eco Enclose to make these little poop stickers that I can use to seal my glassine envelopes and I won't have to feel guilty about it because it's not just another sticker, it's a sticker that's zero waste and recyclable. So because this eight and a half by 11 sheet basically looks like your average sticker paper sheet, I decided that I would try it out on my Cricut machine and the only thing that I would have to worry about is the cut line and just make sure that whatever design I use that I keep this cut line down the middle in mind so that I don't have stickers printing out on the cut line that get ruined. So when I tried doing that, it actually worked and it got me super excited to be able to make my own stickers and as I mentioned in Studio Vlog 7, I was just waiting for all of my non-eco-friendly stickers 
to be used up so that I could completely transition to making my own zero waste lined recyclable stickers. So obviously now I've gotten to that point and that's actually why I'm making this video so that you guys can learn how I make my eco-friendly zero waste stickers as well. You can see on the back here that it says that it's a zero waste liner made from 100% recycled materials, curbside recyclable with paper, please recycle. And if you look at the paper, you can see that it doesn't really have any shine to it so it has none of that coating that normal stickers have and it's not super sticky like regular sticker paper as you can see i can peel it off pretty easily so that kind of does help prove that it is a less intense sticky that would still be okay to go through in the recycling facility. I would describe the stickiness about the same stickiness as removable stickers that you might use in your bullet journals or planners. Now here's a glossine envelope that has an online label sticker on it and I just want to show you how the stickiness compares because it's not as easy to peel. Yeah, you can hear it's kind of ripping the paper, so it is definitely much of a stronger adhesive. And if you look at the sticker paper, you can see that really strong glossy finish on the back. So that's the silicone coating that Eco Enclose is talking about that's usually on stickers. So all of the stickers that you see here are the stickers that I've been able to make with the zero waste line shipping labels from Eco Enclose. These are ones that I use for potty mouth boxes. These are ones that I use for the peas and love boxes. These are the ones that I put on the shipping envelopes like you see here. These are the ones that I put on the back of the shipping envelopes, almost made to look like it's sealing the envelope, but it's more for aesthetic and just to thank the customer. These are the little poop stickers. This is my potty mouth poop logo, so if you're wondering why I have little poop stickers, that's why. And I use these stickers to seal my glassine envelope like I showed you earlier. And then these are the stickers that I use for all of my jewelry just to write down what phrase that I've made so that it makes it easier to pack. And also to remind everyone that every letter is hand stamped with love by me. So now I'm just going to show you the process of how I actually made these stickers and design the Cricut Design Space file so that it can cut it out. A lot of people have asked me commenting how I'm able to get so many stickers on one sheet and I honestly couldn't really figure out how to answer them because I would just make it the 6.75 by 9.25 dimensions that it says is the max. But I recently figured out an extra step that I do to make sure that it all stays on one page so I will be showing you guys that trick. So I'm in Photoshop right now just because I wanted to show you how I save the file first that I import into the Cricut Design Space. This is the file that I imported into the Cricut Design Space, but it was actually a square before, so I wanted to show you guys how you can turn it into a circle if your logo happens to be in a square format as well. So I'm just going to fill this layer right here with the same color that's on the background of my sticker. And then just merge these two just so you can see what I started with so just to make it a circle I went over here I don't really know my my tool names I think this is the marquee tool and I went to the elliptical marquee tool and while holding shift I drag it open as far as I want and I held shift just so that it's a perfect circle instead of an oval and then I just moved it around to where I wanted. It'll show you guidelines so that you know if your circle is exactly centered, but I don't think my background file is actually perfectly centered, so I'm just gonna move the circle to where I think it looks centered. Then I'm gonna hit select inverse, and then you're gonna see that it selected everything outside of the circle, and then you can just delete that. You can deselect by pressing command D, and your circle is done. I don't think mine is perfectly centered, I'm just doing it as an example. So just make sure that when you're positioning your circle marquee around the logo that you take your time and that it's as centered as possible. Then I just go to File, Export, Export As, or you can do Quick Export PNG. And then I'm just saving here as a PNG. 
I've already saved this before, so I'm not going to save it this time. And now I'll show you what I do in Cricut Design Space. So in Cricut Design Space, you can see that I already have all of my circle labels and stickers that I cut out already saved. And this just makes it a lot easier whenever I need to go print and cut some more stickers. So make sure that when you create your first file, just save it in there and name it something that you'll remember. And then you can just go back to it and use it whenever you need to make more stickers. So I've already made the one that I'm going to be showing you, but I'm just going to make it again so that you guys can see exactly how I made mine. So I'm going to go to new, upload, and then you're going to upload whatever PNG file that you just saved. I have mine right here, so I'm just going to click this one and insert it. And then it's going to insert it really big. So the stickers that I wanted to make to match my online label size was two and a half, but I want it to still fit 12 per sheet. So I think the size that ended up fitting within the 6.75 width that Cricut Design Space allows you was 2.2. So I'm gonna type 2.2 as the width, hit enter, and then I'm just gonna position this in the corner. Then I'm going to copy and paste. I just did Command C, Command V and I'm gonna put it as close to the first circle as I can, but still having a gap there. Then I'm gonna Control C, Control V again, or Command C, Command V, and put the third one there. And you can see here that it ends just with, oh, <laughs> Nick sneeze. And you can see here that it ends just before the 6.75 line. And if you want to select all of them and resize it a little bit more so you can get it as big as possible, you can. And there we go. So now I'm just going to select all three since they're positioned exactly how I want them. And I want 12 stickers per sheet, so I'm going to copy and paste this three more times. So again, the max dimensions in the Cricut Design Space are 6.75 by 9.25. So this bottom half of stickers, I just put it so that it's as close to the 9.25 as possible. And you can see in this middle part that I have a larger gap than I do in this part over here. And that's just because the eco-enclosed paper has that cut line down the middle. So I want this gap to be as big as possible so that my stickers don't print on that cut line. Okay, so next is the trick that should help you guys get all of these stickers on one sheet. So if I hit make it, you can see that it split up my stickers. So it says that I have to print eight on one sheet and then four on the other sheet. So that's probably why you guys are struggling with getting more stickers on your sheet. So what you do to prevent that, so you know that you have everything in the Cricut design space within the size constraints that Cricut allows. So it's kind of confusing as to why it's splitting everything up. So to prevent that, you're going to hit Control A or Command A, which is the same thing as selecting every single little sticker that you have on your design. And you're going to hit Attach. So Attach means that you want everything on one sheet, that you want it to look exactly how it looks like to you within the Cricut design space without Cricut arranging things however it thinks that it should be. So now when you go to make it, all of the stickers are now on one sheet. Now all that's left is to just print it on your eco-friendly sticker paper. So I'm gonna hit continue. I'm gonna send it to my printer. I'm gonna use my HP printer. And since these ones have a background color, and I don't want any whites around it, I'm gonna hit add bleed so that it prints extra of this mint color around. That way, if the Cricut is just a tiny bit off when it's cutting, it's not gonna cut into the white and make the sticker look bad. I'm also gonna select use system dialog and hit print. And it's gonna show behind the app 
And I just do that so that I can then select best quality just so that the stickers print as nice as possible and don't have any of like those faded lines on it that you get if you just did normal printing where it's trying to save you ink. Now with your sticker paper loaded, you just hit print and you wait for it to print. As you can see, the way that I designed the file, nothing printed on the cut line because we put that extra space in between, so that's good. And the circles are touching, but that's only because I selected the add bleed option. The Cricut will cut slightly inside of the circle, so should be good to go. So now I'm just gonna turn on my Cricut machine. And to make the stickers, you can either use Cricut's light grip mat or I use a standard grip mat that I've used for a pretty long time so it's not as sticky. You can use a standard grip mat but it's pretty sticky so you just have to be careful when you're peeling off the sticker sheet and make sure that you're not ripping anything when you're peeling it off of a newer standard grip mat. So I'm just gonna put the sticker sheet on the map just like the Cricut design space app tells you to. Just try to line it up in the corner as best you can. And then smooth it out. For this sticker paper, I used the washi tape setting. I tried using the sticky note setting just because I know a lot of sticker shops use the sticky note setting, but the sticky note setting would cut through the paper, the backing a little bit. And I found that the washi tape doesn't do that as much, so I prefer this setting. Now when I go to load it in, I just hold it up a little higher like this so that I'm sure that the top of the mat is flat against the bottom of the Cricut machine. And then you also make sure that it's touching the left side. You have to make it as close to the left side as possible. Then you just load. It's gonna do its thing. Press the flashing Cricut logo. Okay, it's done cutting now, so I'm just gonna unload it. And for these, I actually like peeling this part off just so that only the stickers are left behind. It just makes it easier to grab when I'm packing the orders. So this part that would normally be waste can actually be recycled. And then to remove the stickers, I just flip the mat over and peel it back like that just so it doesn't curl the paper as much. And here you have your eco-friendly stickers. See? Eco Enclose Zero Waste Liner. 100% recycled and 100% recyclable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it really helpful. I'm, again, I'm really passionate about making everything as zero waste and recyclable as possible just because I feel like as a shop sending out a bunch of orders, it's part of my responsibility to make it easier for the customer to not produce extra waste. And I hope that this video helped you realize that you can head in that direction too and that you can make your packaging cute with stickers without feeling bad that they're not recyclable. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.